It's Friday, February 8th. The Reserve Bank of India has lowered the repo rate, which is the rate at which it lends to commercial banks by 25 basis points. What does this mean for us? In turn, banks could lower lending rates for home and consumer loans, thereby boosting consumption. Lower interest rates mean lower cost of borrowings, which means increased investment spending by businesses. The central bank policy also signals further rate cuts. The Monetary Policy Committee that decides rates said investment activity is recovering but supported mainly by public spending on infrastructure. The need is to strengthen private investment activity and buttress private consumption. But the move to reduce rates has come as a surprise. Why? First, let's step back for a bit and look at what is monetary policy. Simply put, the two tools used to guide or influence the economy of a country are fiscal policy and monetary policy. Fiscal policy is the budgetary policy, or how the government uses tax rates and public spending with the aim of stabilizing and promoting economic growth, employment generation, and for a developing country like India, achieving social justice goals. Monetary policy, essentially, is the mechanism through which the central bank, in our case the RBI, manages the money supply in the economy. To what end? To control inflation, bring stability in economic growth, chiefly. So, a lowering of interest rates will, as we said, mean lower cost of borrowings, which means increased investments, good for economic growth. Lower rates also mean increased consumption because people have more money to spend. Now, as demand increases, if supply or productive capacity of the economy does not increase similarly, the price of goods will increase, which is inflation. And inflation targeting is seen as the primary objective of most central banks. It is a priority for the Reserve Bank of India. And inflation is impacted by an interplay of fiscal and monetary policy. Increased government investment and spending resulting in increased demand could lead to inflation. So here is why Thursday's rate cut came as a surprise. The Monetary Policy Committee was meeting after the budget and was expected to take the impact of this expansionary budget into account. Also, as has been argued in opinion pieces like this one in Business Today, which says, conditions may be right, but not perfect to cut interest rates, the writer points out, it is only in the last five months that inflation has seen a steep downward trend because of food and crude prices. The inflation should be low and stable for a long time for a cut in interest rates. And core inflation is sticky. The core consumer price index inflation, which is without food and fuel, is still sticky. In fact, the core inflation has been clocking a 5-6% to 6 growth rate for the last 12 months. The core inflation is the right indicator as it doesn't take into account change in food and fuel prices, which are highly volatile. That said, in an election year, the rate cut suits the government that would want to see boost to lending and a push for growth. Reuters quoted a leader of the economic wing of the RSS as saying, the new Reserve Bank of India Governor Shakti Kanta Das has, quote, passed the litmus test by cutting the policy rate on Thursday. A Delhi court has adjourned till the 14th of February, hearing on an application filed by Indrani Mukherjee, former director of INX Media, seeking to become an approver in the corruption case in which former finance minister P. Chidambaram San Karthi is her co-accused. In February last year, Indrani had testified before a magistrate that Karthi Chidambaram demanded a bribe from her and husband Peter Mukherjee in exchange for using his influence to fix Foreign Investment Promotion Board approvals for INX Media. That statement was recorded under Section 164 of the CRPC, which is to say it is admissible in court. The government on Sunday reportedly gave the CBI sanction to prosecute former Finance Minister P. Chidambaram in the INX Media case. The senior Congress leader had moved the Delhi High Court seeking anticipatory bail. The two agencies probing the case, the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate, have opposed the bail plea, stating that his custodial interrogation was required. As per news agency PTI, the court has already reserved the order on the plea. It was during Chidambaram's tenure as finance minister that FIPB clearance was given to INX Media, owned by Indrani and Peter Mukherjee. Indrani Mukherjee is also the main accused in the murder of her daughter Sheena Bora, 
and is currently standing trial in Mumbai. The last four years were the four warmest years on record, a United Nations report shows. This is, the report said, a clear sign of continuing long-term climate change associated with record atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases. Modern temperature record, remember, began in 1850. Global average surface temperature in 2018 was approximately 1.0 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial baseline. The year 2016, which was influenced by a strong El Nino event, remains the warmest year on record, 1.2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial baseline. In the coming years, temperatures are likely to approach levels that most governments consider dangerous for the Earth, Reuters said, citing the report. World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Pateri Talis said the long-term temperature trend is far more important than the ranking of individual years, and that trend is an upward one. The 20 warmest years on record have been in the past 22 years. The degree of warming during the past four years has been exceptional, both on land and in the ocean. Temperatures are only part of the story. Extreme and high-impact weather affected many countries and millions of people with devastating repercussions for economies and ecosystems in 2018. Many of the extreme weather events are consistent with what we expect from a changing climate. This is a reality we need to face up to. And as the WMO points out, 2019 has started with extreme high-impact weather in many parts of the world, including dangerous and extreme cold in North America, record heat, wildfires and rainfall in Australia, record temperatures and rainfall in parts of South America, and heavy snowfall in the Alps and Himalayas. This is Raphael Samuel, and he is suing his parents for giving birth to him. A self-proclaimed Anti-natalist Raphael believes this. Basically, I want everyone in India and also the world to realize one thing that they are born without their consent, that they do not owe their parents anything. And I also want to know that if, I, if we are born without our consent, then we should be maintained for the rest of our life. We should be paid to live. Why not? Confused? Let's rewind a bit. Antinatalism essentially argues that bringing children into a cruel world full of suffering is an immoral act and that instead of trying to protect one's children from the evils of the world, people should simply have empathy for the unborn and not have a child. With roots dating back to Buddhist teachings and a 2nd century AD Christian sect, the idea seems to have two living proponents. Brazilian philosopher Julio Carbera, who says procreation is about sending, quote, a human being into a painful and dangerous situation without their consent. And David Benata, whose rather popular book, Better Never to Have Been, The Harm of Coming into Existence, arguably brought antinatalism back to the mainstream. So does antinatalism have followers? With a subreddit page with over 22,000 followers, a movement, several Facebook pages promoting an end to procreation, to save an already overburdened earth? Surprisingly, yes. But so does a question voiced by Samuel's mother, lawyer Kavita Samuel, who says, if Rafael could come up with a rational explanation as to how we could have sought his consent to be born, I will accept my fault. Which is the real question, isn't it? How does one take consent of the unborn? Also, is that beard real? Ponder that. And we'll see you with more news, analysis, and possibly philosophy on Monday. Love your morning fix? Help support our journalism. Subscribe to Scroll Plus using the link in the description.